KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead 88.1 FM. You are watching or listening to Finding Me. And now we go into part four of episode two. Then uh, we cut back to the town, and Adora, Bo, and Glimmer have uh, realized when they do reach the village that, oh, snap, you look like a horde soldier, and if people see you, they're going to freak out. So they disguise her a little bit so that she looks a little bit more casual, and they put on a cloak, a little bit of flowers, so she looks peaceful and nice and everything, and Adora is already uncomfortable. So then Adora is, like, looking around, because she's never been in a town full of civilians outside of the Fright Zone or anything, and to be honest, I'm not even sure what communities look like in the Fright Zone, but... Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll never find out. Nothing's explained. Adora starts asking questions, experiencing things she's never felt or witnessed, having been raised in the Fright Zone. What's this? What's that? It's a festival, like a big party. You haven't heard of a party or a festival? And so, obviously, Bo tries to amend this issue and be like, Glimmer, I know that you told us that we have to hurry up, but let's give her the experience of a party. Now, here are some points that I noticed about this whole thing. And, again, I'm reminding you, because in the first part I mentioned it, and in the second part I talked about it again, I think. I don't remember what I'm recording anymore. Anyway, uh, so, Bo is, like, really nice to her, takes her to the food booth to try out the food, and then, you, like, you see in her eyes that she's, like, really enjoying it because she's never had something this good before. And at first, Glimmer is, like, trying to be all stone-faced about it, like, psh, whatever. But then she sees how much fun Adora is having. And it's supposed to be sympathetic. It's supposed to be cute. But I feel like that um, some places in this analogy was, like, overdone in terms of, like, the food part. Because not only did, like, she try out this new food she also uh this point is also driven harder when she has six plates and bowls of food in front of adora and then glimmer even surrenders one of her plates to her so that she can continue eating because it's supposed to drive the point home that adora is uh always hungry and malnourished and then you know adora starts to bash a pinata for the sake of the treats And, like, maybe this was part of it, but, like, she takes it really seriously. Like, she's about to fight an opponent rather than just beating the crap out of a pinata for the sake of the candy. Um, Then Adora is, like, hiding, like, in the trees trying to see, like, listen on a story that she's never heard before. And, like, you know, her eyes are full of wonder and stuff. And Glimmer, again, is just kind of like, okay, maybe I am, like, handling with you too roughly because you're a hold soldier and you've never had these experiences before so maybe i'm being too harsh and then bo asks her "Eh, have you had birthdays and she's like huh and you know to his horror like she has no idea what birthdays are either which again is just funny to me considering that like (laughs) she doesn't even know where she's from and so then she spots the horse and she's like, what is that? And it's a horse. And uh, after she's uh, approached it with Bo, forcing her to touch it so that she can have this experience, um, the explosion is heard and in comes Katja on their tanks and with all their uh, robot sentries. And then she's like, wait a minute, why are they attacking here? And then she's like, oh, snap. This is Thamor. I thought, wait, there has to be a mistake. Thamor is supposed to be this heavily fortified uh, fortress of rebels. And it's not that. This is full of civilians. And she was the one that was supposed to originally take over this area for the Horde. And now she realizes, oh, shit. So then... uh. Glimmer is begged by Adora to uh, find a way to stop the attack because she knows these people and they have to listen to her maybe because she's a force captain, of course. And uh, Glimmer at first is just like, okay, I guess. 
And then, uh, of course, Adora, who already knows that Catra wasn't supposed to be out here anyway, finds out that Catra is there. And it's like, whoa, what are you doing here? So then she tries to convince Catra that this is all a terrible idea and that they need to turn around and not do this anymore. And Catra really does not care again and tells her, uh, yeah, sure, innocent civilians that happen to kidnap a horde soldier. What's the difference? You know, our perspective is our perspective, and that's how it's going to be. Does it really matter? I just want to be this chaotic destructor. And then uh, Adora's just like, why do you got to do this? We've been lied and manipulated. And uh, someone brought this to my attention, again, to the uh, the YouTubers. Um, again, I'll probably, like, link to that because I was just like, Phew. yeah, of course. So, and... Catra is, like, not surprised that they've been lied to and manipulated by Hordak and Shadow Weaver. Because it's like, duh, of course. We know what's up. I th I'm surprised you didn't know what's up. So then, uh, since Adora is like, okay, well, I guess you know. So why are you still here? We could just run off. You don't have to deal with this stuff anymore. And instead of take her up on that offer... Uh, Catra stops her by shocking her with a device, um, with this tasing device. And then she's just like, oh, huh, that was stronger than I thought it was. And then it just becomes a more desperate attempt to keep Adora with her. When, again, she could still run away from Shadow Weaver and have Adora with her if she left. But she doesn't want to. And Catra is one of my least favorite characters for this reason is because it's just very inconsistent and erratic and destructive and I personally wouldn't want anything to do with her. And I think my only comparison here that I can draw from from previous uh, incarnations of relationships like this is from Kingdom Hearts where it reminds me of like Axel and Syx and they were kind of in a cult group and they figured even though they were being lied and manipulated, uh, they wanted to somehow move up the ladder and call the shots to make things better, even though they had no idea how to do that. So uh, I can understand sort of why Catra might feel um, betrayed by Adora when she's only known Glimmer and Bow for a few hours, tops. But every time Adora offers her hand, is it really betrayal? Come on. So then, with Famor falling apart, things are getting difficult. Glimmer realizes that, dang it, I should have given the sword over, and maybe I'm not a very good commander. And Bo is just like, whoa, hold up. Hold the F up. And just says, well, let's just, you know, calm down. Let's think. I'm here, you're here, what can we do? And then Glimmer's just like, all right, let's give over the sword. Bo is like, what, really? All right, so, you know, uh, they start enacting their plan to help out Adora, who is being tased by Catra, and Catra is, like, desperate to get Adora to come back because she does not want Shadow Weaver to come down on her like a ton of bricks. And so Glimmer gets her out, and... Adora's just like, why did you save me? And Glimmer tells her, well, I mean, I was kind of, uh, you know, being a butt face and I didn't give you the sword when I could have and it would have wasted a lot less time and I wouldn't be so low on energy, etc. But I think I can trust you, even though you are a horde soldier and you should kind of blame me for all of that and to Adora's credit, she does tell Glimmer, well, I am a horde soldier, so maybe you shouldn't have trusted me, and that's fair, but let's go. So she transforms into She-Ra more with intent in this transformation sequence, which kind of reminds me of like a Sailor Moon kind of vibe, and I'm not sure if that's what they were going for, because I've seen like short clips of the original She-Ra transformation, but, and I think it's it's kind of nice, so I mean... Great. Uh, but then, like, you know, so Adora finally becomes She-Ra. She destroys the robot sentries. And then she uh, paralyzes the other tanks. Tosses uh, 
a robot sentry um, across the field and like terrorizes the horde soldiers into retreating. And uh, they make it, they try to make it like, like look really cool because like she's glowing with power and everything. And uh, then Catra, after seeing all this destruction that Adora has caused, she's like looking at her with like a mix, not necessarily awe the way Bo and Glimmer do, but like with horror, fear, and a little bit of disgust mixed with uh, a little bit of hatred. There's just a lot of negative feelings going on. And uh, so then she also makes a retreat because she knows that there's just no way. There's no way I'm going to fight Adora as she when she's destroying the Horde equipment like this. And uh, so once everyone has retreated and the Thamor is mostly destroyed, um, I suppose there are survivors. And so it's just like, okay, we save the city. And uh, it occurs to Adora once she has stepped out of her she-ra um persona and it's kind of portrayed in a way where she feels where it looks like she was sort of in a uh hypnotic state with this power and she's like she snaps out of it and she's like oh crap i turned against the horde i did it and now she can't go back so like rightfully so she's panicking like where will i go i don't have anywhere to go that was my one home which is understandable, like I said. And Glenn was just like, I got this. I got this. You can come home with us. It'll be cool. We'll figure this up. We'll figure this out. And that's the end of episode two. Oh, wait. Sorry. And then they have the horse and they take it with them. So um, at first I figured, like, because I only knew bits and pieces of the she lore and based on the promo image uh we then like take this horse and eventually it might turn into the unicorn later so i knew that much i just didn't know how it was going to be portrayed and i got told from a friend that the original horse character was telepathic and uh also had a girlfriend and a child so i mean We've only got season three, and I only like the Swiftwind character for, like, around 60 seconds or so. Because everything else about that character bothers me, and I just can't place why, except just general annoying persona. But, uh, that's, that's all I've got for episode two analysis. Um, I thank you for listening. And, uh, that's all I've got. Bye bye Tonight's show was written and produced by Nemo Cicados. Finding Me is a project of KPPPLP 88.1 FM Fargo-Moorhead. KPPPLP is adding local color to your airwaves. You can find us on your radio dial at 88.1 FM. Here in the Fargo-Moorhead region, you can contact us at 701-566-0917 at media underscore ppp email me at nemo at kppfm.com follow us on facebook at kppp radio the people's press project and at mexican online donations to fargo moorhead's newest low power commercial free radio station can be made at our website on kppfm.com forward slash donate tune in next week for more on finding me